Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Gavin from Balls to You and in this video I'm going to go over the uh, the female ball python reproductive cycle. Um, I've covered this in a video like a few years back, however it's always great. I love to revisit this type of diagram and sort of discussion with you guys and there's a lot of new people to the hobby who are new to my channel or in general just new to the hobby that have um, that are kind of a bit confused or a bit unsure about the process of the female and what they actually go through. So we're going to be discussing basically the female reproductive cycle of a ball python. Okay, so I'm no uh, artist, but I'll do my best for you guys. Okay, what we have here is a simple sort of drawing and I'll go over it very layman terms. Here are our follicles. Okay, so these are our um, follicular, if you like, maturity rate or growth rate, whatever you want to call it. Normally, they go, they stay at around three to five millimeters. Okay, that tends to be, you know, female, you know, not in breeding season, just going along a normal day. You know, that tends to be the normal growth, let's say, of the, of the follicle development. This stage here, we're going to call this 10 millimeters okay now what tends to happen is when you introduce a male to a female um, I believe it spurs the female to start growing the follicles now you've also got a number of attributes which can make this happen as well such as the dropping temperature the air pressure the changing of the seasons that can also um, you know get a, a female to start growing her follicles I tend to find when you introduce a male, that tends to be the time that, it, that they will start to grow. Some mature females will already have their follicles at 10 millimeters ready for a male, but some of the, the non-mature or the younger or maybe the first time moms <clears throat> need that introduction of a male. So let's start very simple. Here, this part here, is the, how long it can take to grow follicles for a female. So this period here tends to be uh, four to eight months. Okay. So again, depending on the female, depending on the temperatures, depending on the maturity, all that sort of stuff, a female can take anything from four months to eight months to grow them follicles up to 45 millimeters. <clears throat> Round about 45 millimeters is when the female will start to ovulate. This is the ovulation mark, okay? So here is where they will ovulate at 45 millimeters. At that stage, the follicles will now move into the oviduct where they will become fertilized, which is where you see the ovulation stage. This stage here, so from the 10 to the 45 mil, is what we call the build stage, okay? So, she's building the follicles up to that size to get them into the overduct to where they're going to be fertilized. So this stage is very important. This stage is where a lot of people make mistakes. At this stage, it is vital that we make sure all our conditions are correct. The feeding regime is bang on and we continue to introduce a male to the females. Um, I typically introduce a male once a month and I tend to get four to five locks before they develop and go on to give me eggs. Anyway, round about this stage, let's use this part here, round about 20 millimeters is round about the glow stage. So that is what we call the glow before they go. 20 to 30 millimeters, roughly on average, is where a female will start to glow. And that's pretty much where the critical time when you need to introduce a male or the vital locks are between those 
sizes, so between 20 millimeters and 45 millimeters. If you have an ultrasound machine, you will see these, uh, you'll see the, the um, follicles grow over the months. And the ultrasound is fantastic because it gives you an indication of when to put the, the male in. However, we're just, you know, we're standard. We don't have ultrasounds. I don't have an ultrasound. I've never had a ultrasound machine. I'd like one, um, but like I said, this is how and this is why I know my animals. Anyway, so this is the critical time when you need to add a male and make sure you get that lock. This is the build stage. So in the build stage, we are going to have the female is going to do a few things. The first thing she's probably going to do over this period is call seek. Okay, now that's where she'll probably spend most of the time at the front of the tub and bowl wrapping. The simple way to do it is I keep my hot spots between 88 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit and it gives a good gradual gradient of cooling down towards the front of the tub where they can go for the desired temperature that they wish because they will thermoregulate themselves. So that is another behavioral aspect of the female that during this cycle that you will see. Another one you'll see, let's say in this aspect here as well, you will also see an increase of a feeding response. Okay, so you're gonna have a feeding response here, pretty much through most of the development of the building stage. But there is also another factor, which I've discussed on other videos. Around about the, the, the 15 to the 20 mil moving forward, they will probably go off food, okay? So <clears throat> they will start smashing food. The minute they start seeing a male, they'll start smashing food, which is where you need to make sure you feed those females to the best of your abilities, okay? And then there'll come a point where literally they'll just stop feeding. That's because where they are growing follicles, they know they cannot fit enough room to digest the food and the follicles in the same area. So because they want to produce the follicles to produce eggs, they will sometimes take the prey but not eat it or they will simply go off food. I've got about five females now which are off food. So that tells me they are pretty much close to the glow before they go stage, okay? And again, don't confuse the building stage with an ovulation, okay? You will see an ovulation and you will know the difference. So cool seeking, a feed, an increasing feeding response, but you'll also Notice when a female gets to this stage, she may go off of food as well. That's nothing to worry about. That's just pretty standard. That part of the breeding cycle pretty much nailed down. What we're going to have here, this is going to be our ovulation stage, as I've said here, right? So the ovulation can be anything. Um, well, an ovulation will probably last around about 24 hours, let's say and you will see increase. And that's why during these cycles, when a female is close to 20 millimeters uh, and coming up to 45 millimeters, I will check on those females every day, every night. This part here is the pre-lay shed, okay? Now, the distance between the ovulation and the pre-lay shed I've documented at being 20, uh, sorry, uh, 19 days to 22 days. Okay, depends on when they ovulate and how long they ovulate for. You know, I may have I may have missed the ovulation, but I find pretty much because a lot of people get confused. You know, a female will shed in this part of the cycle, and if you can imagine, they see a build, they think, oh great, you know, she's ovulated and then they see her shed out, they think, oh great, she shed out. 30 days later, I should see eggs, and they don't see eggs, they start to panic. 
that's because the female never ovulated it was actually a build so what i like to do like i said normally 19 to 22 days in and around that time you'll see a female do a pre-lay shed um this is documented again guys this is all stuff that i have uh, documented over the years collected the data and this is all put into my breeding recipe uh, and this is like a little breeding chart uh, that I tend to adapt to what my females do the prelay shed is the prelay before the eggs so here we should get eggs if we're successful with this part pretty much after this part it's down to the female you're either going to get slugs or you're going to get eggs so once we've got this part nailed literally it's down to the female for the rest a lot of people claim this to be 30 days which can be pretty much spot on my calculations i've had females lay as early as 21 days and as late as 45 days 30 days is the typical average however i've had them lay well believe it or not i've had one female only one female lay at 19 days and i've only ever had one female lay at 51 days but on average they all lay around about 30 days but over the years i've had them either lay at 21 or between 45 days that's that's going to give you guys you know you need to be egg watching but from the 21st day to the to when she lays basically um, and again you you may get these dates and what have you mixed up so you've got to give yourself a little bit of leeway either side okay so you may get these mixed up so don't panic and again don't use these as the gospel you've just got to give yourself like I said you may have missed a few days or you may have missed her pre lay shed so just just bear that in mind in this stage is your babies that's what we're aiming for okay so this again depends on your temperatures and i'm going to go over that one very shortly is anything from 51 to 60 days on average it's about 55 days okay but i want to go over this part as well this part is kind of out of our control this part is within our control and this part is within our control this part the 51 to 60 days depends completely on your temps that's important and the reason why the temps are important is because if you have your temperatures too hot or too cold you will come across problems and you've done all this she has gone and done all that and then you mess it up because your temperatures aren't correct your temperatures need to be correct and this is where i say to people fail to prepare prepare to fail if you've never done this before that's fine don't panic you've just got to make sure you do your research and i see a lot of new breeders trying to over complicate things in other words they try and make the most complicated incubators they try and over complicate the egg box when there's no need to keep it simple stupid my stat on my incubator is at 91 degrees fahrenheit i can tell you within my incubator it runs at roughly 90 90 to 91 that's within the incubator not the egg boxes the egg, the incubator itself most of my babies hatch between 51 to 55 days i find that to work fine for my incubator and my egg boxes if you've not seen my incubator I've, i did a build video which i'll try and link up above somewhere hang on where are we up there <laughs> uh, and i'll also try and link uh, how i do my egg boxes as well but this is basically how i work with what i have in my incubator it's running at 91 degrees fahrenheit i ran a test and i put a, um, a probe uh, and a little thermometer in my egg boxes uh, where i could see 
and my egg box inside my egg box it runs between 88 to 89 degrees Fahrenheit box okay so between 88 to 89 degrees Fahrenheit within my egg box now what I want you to take from that is what I've set my stat at and what my egg box's internal temperature are. Now, I don't bother putting in uh, thermometer probes or temperature probes within my egg boxes because I know what they run at, okay? Too many temperature probes or too many thermometers, you will watch those and you will panic and you will go, ah, oh, you know, it's too hot, it's too cold, I need to adjust it. And you'll start messing with your incubator through the incubation period, which is critical. What I will suggest is you set up your egg boxes and your incubator, let's say easily a month before you know you're due to have eggs or maybe three weeks or two weeks before you're due to have eggs um, and get it all ready, dial it in. I see people incubate and check this, their incubation sometimes as in their stat is a hell of a lot higher. It can be 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I don't suggest that because I've never done that. However, I have seen people have incubation issues because they put it too high. And the same the other way. I've seen people incubate at 86 degrees thinking that, oh, it's okay, you know, we'll slow grow the babies. They'll hatch around about 65 days. And what happens is 65 days later, they still haven't hatched because they're undeveloped. And then there's actually issues with the clutch because they haven't been incubated at the correct temperature. The safe zone, and I will tell you the safe zone for me is to have my egg boxes between 88 and 89 degrees Fahrenheit. If you incubate, if you put your incubator on at 89 degrees Fahrenheit, within that egg box, I'll guarantee you, it will be round about 86. Is that good enough? Possibly. Will they hatch on day 55? Possibly. But bear in mind, the cooler you have it, the longer it will take to hatch. But what I don't want to do, I don't want to put all my time and effort into this stage, let my female put all her time and effort into this stage, for me to mess it up at this stage. This is another important stage of the breeding process that we as breeders need to take responsibility for. Um, and again, there's a lot of people out there who do things differently and that's fine. If it works for you and you have success, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. This is predominantly aimed at the new people coming into the hobby, the people who wanna learn or maybe last year you know, you had a, a real bad year, maybe there was issues with your incubator, and maybe you wanna revisit your incubator settings or how you may do things. This is what this is based on, guys. This is here to help you uh, with your breeding season. The other thing I wanna point out is, round about this stage, from the growing of the follicles to the laying of the eggs, your female can become quite aggressive. And I don't mean that in a nasty way, like she, you know, she's, she's a nasty snake. But what happens is during this cycle, this part of the cycle, all she's, she's thinking about food. Then at this stage, she's becoming very unsettled. So this stage, pretty much is food orientated regarding the aggression. This stage, she's probably very uncomfortable, okay? And then this stage, she's laying her eggs and she's protecting her babies. So those females that once were uh, puppy dog tame now actually become more like Rottweilers in a, in a nice sense. I like Rottweilers, but you know, it's an old saying. Anyway, they become quite aggressive or they can seem to become quite aggro. I hope this sort of helps you look at your breeding aspect and look at your um, setups maybe, look at your incubator, look at your egg boxes, and also give yourself a bit of um, 
a reminder, if you like, of what the process is. Like I said, this is here to help. You know, there's a hundred ways to do this. Um, this is the way I do it. This is the way that gives me the most success. And this is the way that I find is very idiot proof and very simple to follow. I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Again, there's plenty more to come. Thanks again for all your love and support. I really do respect and love you all. Again, if you don't mind, uh, dropping a comment in the comment box, hitting that notification bell, subscribing, and giving me a like. I really do appreciate it. Share it if you want. That's more than welcome to. A lot of people say, can I share your video? Of course you can. But for now, guys, I hope this helps, and I'll see you guys in the next one.